Oh. Don't run into almost the almost drove off the road. <laughs> I was looking at my chickens. Hey, you all. Where are we going? To the, to the cherry farm. farm. Yeah, We're going farm. to the cherry farm. up some things, getting a tour, and enjoying the lovely view. we just enjoy the cherries from up here mm -hmm. today um, <laughs> and uh, rather than walk around down there in the cherry orchard our property actually goes up the hill and our existing Royal Ann orchard is up on the top mm -hmm. of the hill and there's a really pretty view up there yeah. so it's an older orchard in the traditional yeah. um, large trees that mm -hmm. are 30 and 40 feet. They're oh, yeah. 60 years old oh. and we're actually in the process of tearing, yeah. them, tearing them out. Mm -hmm. um, cherries do not continue. They're not like blueberries. When they're done, they are done. Um, and this is part of why this orchard exists. One, we wanted to have an orchard that was visible to the public. Mm -hmm. um, and also, these are the new style of cherry trees. They're on um, working rootstock, so they are mm -hmm. grown and managed to be lower to the ground. Um, mm -hmm. They do require a lot of pruning to keep them low, but then it doesn't okay. require as much handwork for picking okay. and pruning and everything else. Mm -hmm. Royal lands are very perishable, so they don't um, have the shelf life that like bean cherries have or even mm -hmm. rainier cherries have. Um, and so, good for tea, though. yeah, they do. <laughs> when you buy a cherry in the grocery store that's like the Royal Land, the, the color and, and stuff, is that a Royal Land? No, it's no, a Rainier. It's a Rainier. I would be yeah. shocked if you ever saw a Royal Land in a grocery store. So I have to try some Royal Lands like fresh at some point because I'm always impressed with the flavor of those Rainiers. Mm -hmm. You'd probably be so super impressed. Yeah, Royal Land's yeah. better than that. It's it is. Yeah, we're gonna start at the yeah. beginning. So 
So the fruit comes off the cherry trees. Uh, we have a tank that we'll put at the end of this table to rinse off all of our fruit and clean out any field debris, dust, leaves, things like that. So we rinse out the fruit and then all of the fruit goes up on this sorting line. The real workhorse of this operation, besides our employees, because they're, <laughs> they're, we couldn't do it without them. I'm very curious but about this. I'm come off the table into this hopper, which kind of moves back and forth, and then the cherries fall into the cavities. And these are the knives that punch out the cherry pit. Only good cherries will fall down into the white buckets underneath, and then the cherry pits come out the side over here. There's water that's running through this machine to help keep everything moving. And so I'll move this so you can see those knives going up see that and then down. And those, those things go down inside and punch the pit out of the cherry. Freeze them after harvest, so they're sitting in frozen storage until we're ready to work with them. Mm -hmm. So we thaw the cherries, they go on these trays here, and then the juice okay. falls down into the blue tub here, so we're able to separate out the juice, and just the fruit stays on here. Okay, okay drum roll, this is our dryer! It's a big exactly. furnace in a box, yeah. basically. And so we'll take those same trays and put them on the rack, just like this. So, so. it looks like a, almost like a bread rack. Mm -hmm. It is. And uh, so we'll fill this up with trays, put them in there, turn on the heat, and we start drying. This is when everybody has to put on a hairnet. Oh, the chocolate factory. Okay, so I have hairnets for everybody. I put it on. Good for you. Sure. Thank you, you didn't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't want to be left out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I even make the bald guys wear it, you know, <laughs> gotta keep every, include everyone. <laughs> Looks good. A hairnet, see? <laughs> This is Josefina, she's our chocolatier. Hi. She's worked for us for almost nine years now. So we have a separate dark chocolate and a separate milk chocolate machine, so there's no cross-contamination with our chocolate. So we always know our dark chocolate is vegan. Right now, Josefina is making the molds. So what she'll do is she actually fills it up with chocolate and then she dumps the majority of it back into the tank because we just want to create a shell of chocolate on the mold. And um, so that she can come back and fill it with cherry. This is a table, so there's a lot of air that is created in the chocolate with that machine. So this table allows her to get the air bubbles out of the chocolate. She'll go through and add cherries into the center of each piece. And she can't do it right now because the chocolate isn't at the right temperature. And I'll explain that next. Imagine there's cherries that she put cherries in the center. And now she's going to finish off those pieces with more chocolate. And so now she's got a full chocolate piece and it'll go back up on the table. Air bubbles that are coming to the surface. See that little air bubble right there? That's why we put it on this table. The molds go in the refrigerator to cool. So we start out, we work with guitar chocolate. They've been making chocolate since 1868. Whoa. Is that a big bar of chocolate? 10 pounds right wow. there. Is it dark chocolate? This is dark chocolate, yes. Don't get put. Don't get <laughs> Will she? <laughs> I have a reputation. <laughs> Out we go. We found my sign. Ooh, it is warm in there. Isn't it? I know, yeah. you don't really realize it. <laughs> You didn't want to keep yours? <laughs> Little <laughs> Okay, now you get to try it. This is dark chocolate and that's milk chocolate. Okay. Are they good? Mm -hmm. yeah. Any thumbs up? Two thumbs up? No. Oh. Only one because the other one had a cherry in it, I think. <laughs> Our farm. Was it fun? Yeah!